Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Leviticus 6 to 10, Proverbs 25. Proverbs. Let me start again. Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Leviticus 6 to 10, Proverbs 3, and Psalm 36. Let's get started. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Suppose someone sins by not being faithful to me. They do it by tricking their neighbours. They trick them in connection with something their neighbours have placed in their care. They steal from their neighbours, or they cheat them, or they find something their neighbours have lost and then tell a lie about it, or they go to court. They promise to tell the truth, but instead they tell a lie when they are a witness about it, or they lie when they are witnesses about any other sin like those sins. When they sin in any of these ways and realise their guilt, they must return in what they stole. They must give back what they took by cheating their neighbours. They must return what their neighbours placed in their care. They must return the lost property they took. They must return anything they told a lie about when they were witnesses in court. They must pay back everything in full. They must add a fifth of its value to it. They must give all of it to the owner on the day they bring it. Their guilt offering. He must bring their guilt offering to the priest to pay for their sin. It is an offering to me. They must bring a ram from the flock. They must not have any flaws. It must be worth the required amount of money. The priest will sacrifice the ram to pay for their sin. They will do it in my sight, and they will be forgiven for any of the things they did that made them guilty. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Give Aaron and the priest in his hand, and the line of command. Tell them, here are some more rules for burnt offerings. The burnt offering must remain must remain on the altar through the whole night. The fire on the altar must be kept burning until tomorrow, until morning. The priest must put on his inner clothes, linen clothes. He must put on linen underwear next to his body. He must remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has burned up on the altar. Then he must place them beside the altar. Then he must take his clothes off and put others on. He must carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning the priest must add more wood to the fire. And he must place the burnt offering on the fire. He must put the burn the fat of the French offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar all the time. It must not go out. <clears throat> he has some more rules for the grain offerings. The priest in Aaron's family line must bring the grain offering to the Lord in the front of the altar. The priest must take a handful of the finest flour and olive oil. He must add to it all the incense on the grain offering. He must burn that part on the altar. It will remind him that all good things come from the Lord. It smell pleases to the Lord. Aaron and the priest in his family line will eat the rest of it. But they must eat it without yeast in the holy area. They must eat it in the courtyard. <laughs> Baked in the <clears throat> baked with yeast added to it. The Lord has given it to the priest as their share of the food offering presented to him. To it is very holy, just like the sin offering and the goat offering. Any priest in Aaron's family line can eat it. It is their share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. It is their share for all time to come. Anyone who touches these offerings will become holy. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, On the day each high priest in Aaron's family line is anointed, he must bring an offering uh, to me. He must bring three and a half pounds of the finest flour as a regular grain offering. He must bring half of it in the morning. He must bring the other half in the evening. Mix it with olive oil. Cook it on a metal plate. Break it in pieces. Bring it as a grain offering. It smell pleased the Lord. The son of Aaron, who become the next high priest after him, will prepare the grain offering. It is the share that must be given to the Lord for all time to come. It must be completely burned up. Every grain offering a high priest offers must be completely burned up. It must not be eaten. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Speak to Aaron and the priest and his family. Tell them, here are some more rules for sin offerings. You must kill the animal for the sin offering in the side of the Lord. Kill it in the place where the burnt offering is killed. It is very holy. The priest who offers it will must will eat it. He must eat it in the holy area. He must eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. Anyone who touches any of its meat will become holy. Suppose some of the blood is spilled on someone's clothes, then you must wash them in the holy area. Break the clay pot the meat is cooked in. But suppose you cook it in a bronze pot, then you must scrub the pot and rinse it with water. Any male in a priest's family may eat the meat. It is very holy, but suppose some of the blood of the sin offering is brought into the tent of meat, and that blood is brought into the holy room to pay for sin, then that sin offering must not be eaten. 
It must be burned up. He asks the mortals for guilt offerings. The guilt offering is very hot. He must kill the animal for the guilt offering, where you kill the animal for the burnt offering. She splashes blood against the sides of the altar. Offer all the fat. He must include the fat tail and the fat that covers the inside part. He must include both kidneys with the fat on them next to the lower back muscles. He must also include the long part of the liver. Remove all of it together with the kidneys. The priest must burn all of it on the altar. This is a food offering presented to the Lord. It is a guilt offering. Any male in a priest's family can eat it, but he must eat it in the holy area. It is very holy. The same law applies to the sin offering and the guilt offering. Both of them belong to the priest who offers them to pay for sin. The priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone can keep a tithe for himself. Every grain offering baked in an oven belongs to the priest who offers it. So does every grain offering cooked in a pan or on a metal plate. Every grain offering belongs equally to all the priests in Aaron's family line. And that is true whether it is mixed with olive oil or it is dry. He has some more rules for friendship offerings and you may bring to the Lord. Suppose they offer a friendship offering to show they are thankful. Then together with the thank offering, they must offer thick loaves of bread. They must make them without yeast. They must mix them with olive oil. Or they must offer thin loaves of bread made without yeast. They must spread olive oil on them. Or they must offer thick loaves of bread made out of the finest flour. They must add olive oil to it. They must work the flour and prepare it well. They must bring another friendship offering along with their thank offering. It should be thick loaves of bread made without made with yeast. They must bring one of each kind of bread as an offering. One kind is made with yeast. The other is not. Both of them are a gift to the Lord. They belong to the priest who splashes the blood of the friendship offering against the altar. The person must eat the meat from their thank offering on the day they offer. They must not leave any of it till, until morning. But suppose they bring a friendship offering to keep a promise they have made. Or suppose they bring an offering they choose to give. Then they must eat the sacrifice on the day they offer. But if anything is left over, they may eat it the next day. They must burn out many meat from the sacrifice left over until the third day. Suppose they eat the meat from the friendship offering on the third day. Then the Lord will not accept the offering. He will not accept it as a gift from them. It is not pure. If they eat any of it, they will be held responsible for it. They must not eat meat that touches anything unclean. They must burn it up. Anyone clean may eat any other meat. But suppose any an unclean person eats any meat from the friendship offering that belongs to the Lord, then they will be separated from their people. Suppose someone touches something unclean. It does not matter whether it comes from a human being who is not clean. It does not matter whether it comes from an unclean animal. It does not matter whether it comes from something hated and unclean. And suppose they eat any of the meat from the friendship offering that belongs to them. Then they will be separated from their people. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Speak to the Israelites. Tell them, Do not eat any of the fowl of cattle, sheep, or goat. Do not eat the fat of any animal found dead. Do not eat the fat of an animal that wild animals have torn apart. But you can use the fat for any other purpose. But suppose an animal has been sacrificed as a food offering to the Lord. No one may eat its fat. If they do, they will be separated from their people. No matter where you live, do not eat the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who eats blood must be separated from their people. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Speak to the Israelites. Tell them, Suppose someone brings a friendship offering to the Lord. Then they must bring part of it as their special gift to the Lord. They must bring it with their own hand. Here is a food offering presented to the Lord. They must bring the fat together with the breast. They must lift the breast up and wave it in front of the Lord as a wave offering. The priest will burn the fat on the altar. But the breast belongs to Aaron and the priest in his family life. Give the right thigh from your friendship offerings to the priest as a gift. The a priest who offers the blood of fat from the friendship offering must be given the right thigh. It is his shirt. I, the Lord, have taken the breast as wave waved and from the friendship of and the side that is given. I have taken them from the friendship offerings of the Israelites. I have, and I have given them to Aaron the priest and the priest in this family land. The offerings will be their share from the Israelites for all time to come. That is the part of the food offerings presented to the Lord. It is given to Aaron and the priest in his family land. It was given to Aaron and his sons on the, on the day they were set apart to serve the Lord's priest. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded the Israelites to give that part to him. For all time to come, it will be the share of Aaron and the priest and his family. These are the rules for burnt offerings, grain offerings, sin offerings, guilt offerings, and friendship offerings. They are given when priests are being prepared to serve the Lord. They are the rules the Lord gave Moses on Mount Sinai. He gave them on the day he commanded the Israelites to bring their offerings to the Lord. 
And that took place in the sin I did. <clears throat> the Lord took, said, spoke to Moses. He said, Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting. Name their clothes and be anointed with oil. Bring the bull for the sin offering. Also bring two rams. Then bring the basket with the bread made without yeast. Then gather the whole community at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Moses did just as the Lord had commanded him. All the people gathered together at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Moses said to the people, Here is what the Lord has commanded us to do. And then Moses brought Aaron and his sons to the people. He washed Aaron and his sons with water. He put the inner robe on Aaron. He tied the bell around him. He dressed him in the outer robe. He put the linen apron on him. He took the skillfully made waistband and tied the apron on him with it. He wanted to make sure it was securely tied to him. Moses played the chest placed the chest cloth on Aaron. He put the Urim and Thummim in the chest cloth. Then he placed the turban on Aaron's head. On the front of the turban, he put the gold plate. It was a sacred crown. Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses took the anointing oil and poured it on the whole tent. He also poured it on everything in it. That's how he set apart those things for the Lord. He sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times. He poured oil on the altar and all its tools. He poured it on the large bowl and its snare. He did it to set them apart. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head. He anointed him to set him apart to serve the Lord. And then Moses got through Aaron's service to the people. He put the inner robes on them. He tied belts around them. He put caps on their heads. He did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. Then he brought the bull for the sin offering. Aaron and his sons placed their hands on his head. Moses killed the bull. He dipped his finger into some of the blood. He put it onto the horns that stick out from the upper four corners of the altar. He did it to make the altar pure. He poured out the rest of the blood at the bottom of the altar. So he set it apart to make it pure. Moses also removed all the fat around the inside parts of the bull. He removed the long part of the leg. He took both kidneys and their fat. Then he burned all of it on the altar. But he burned the rest of the bull outside the camp. He burned up its high, its meat, and its guts. He did it just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses brought the ram for the burnt offering. Aaron and his sons placed their hands on its head. Moses killed the ram. He splashed the blood against the sides of the altar. He cut the ram into pieces. He burned the head, the other pieces, and the fat. He washed the inside parts and the legs with water. He burned the whole ram on the altar as a burnt offering. It had a pleasant smell. It was a food offering presented to the Lord. Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. Then he brought the other ram. It was sacrificed to prepare the priest for serving the Lord. Aaron and his sons placed their hands on its head. Moses killed the ram. He put some of its blood on Aaron's right ear. He put some on the thumb of Aaron's right hand. He also put some on the big toe of Aaron's right foot. Then Moses brought Aaron's sons to the people. He put some of the blood on their right ear. He put some on the thumbs of their right hand. He also put some on the big toes of their right feet. Then he splashed the rest of the blood against the sides of the altar. He removed the fat, the fat tail, and all the fat around the inside parts. He removed the long part of the limb. He removed both kidneys and their fat. And he removed the right thigh. And then he took a thick loaf of bread from the basket of bread made with eggs. The basket was in front of the Lord. Moses took a thick loaf of bread made with all of it. He also took a thin loaf of bread. He put all of it on the fat part of, of the bread, of the rim and on its right thigh. He put everything in the hands of Aaron and his sons. He told them to lift it up and wave it in front of the Lord as a wave offering. Then Moses took it from their hands. He burned it on the altar on top of the burnt offering. It was the offering that was sacrificed on the that was sacrificed to prepare the the priest for serving the Lord. It had a pleasant smell. It was a food offering presented to the Lord. Moses also lifted up the ram's breast and waved it in front of the Lord as a wave offering. The breast was Moses' share of the ram that was sacrificed to prepare the priest for serving the Lord. Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil. He also took some of the blood, the blood and from the altar. He sprinkled some on the oil and blood. Some of the oil and blood on Aaron and his clothes. He also sprinkled some on Aaron's sons and their clothes. That's how he set apart Aaron and his sons. Aaron and his clothes. And that's how he set apart Aaron's sons and their clothes. Then Moses spoke to Aaron and his sons. He said, Cook for me at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Eat it there along with the bread from the bread from the basket of the offerings that I brought to prepare the priest for serving the Lord. Do it just as I just as I was commanded. I was told, Aaron and his sons must eat it. 
then burn up the rest of the meat and the bread. Don't eat the don't leave the entrance to the tent of meeting for the seven days. Don't leave until the days um, days you are that are required to prepare you for serving the Lord have been complete. Stay here for the full seven days. The Lord commanded what has been done here today. It was done to pay for your sin. Stay at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Ten of meeting for seven days. Stay here day and night. <clears throat> Do what the Lord requires me. It requires. Then you won't die. That's the Lord. That's the command the Lord gave me. So Aaron and his sons did everything just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. So on the eighth day, Moses sent for Aaron, his sons, and the elders of Israel. His sons. He said to Aaron, "Bring a bull for your calf for your sin offering. Bring a ram for your burnt offering. They must not have any flaws. Offer them to the Lord. Then speak to the Israelites." Tell them, bring a male goat for the sin offering, for a sin offering. Bring a cow and a lamb for a burnt offering. Both of them must be a year old. They must not have any flaws. Bring an ox and a ram for a friendship offering. Sacrifice all of them to the Lord. I should bring a grain offering. Mix it with olive oil. Today the Lord will appear to you. The Lord, the people got the things Moses commanded them to get. They took them to the front of the tent of meeting. The whole community came up close to the tent. They stood there in front of the Lord. Then Moses said, You have done what the Lord has commanded, so the glory of the Lord will appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar, sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering. Pay for your sin and the sin of the people. Sacrifice the people's offering. Pay for their sin. Do just as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron came to the altar. He killed the calf as a sin offering to himself. He, His sons brought the its blood to it. He dipped it, his finger into the blood. He put some on the horns that stick out from the other four corners of the altar. He poured out the rest of the blood at the bottom of the altar. He burned the fat and the kidneys on the altar. He also burned the long part of the lip. All these parts were from the sin offering. Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He burned up the meat and the hide outside the camp. Then he killed the animal for the burnt offering. His sons handed him its blood. He splashed it against the sides of the altar. He handed him the burnt offering piece by piece. He included the animal's head, and Aaron burned everything on the altar. He washed the inside parts and the legs. He burned them on the top of the burnt offering on the altar. Then Aaron brought the people's offering. He took the goat for their sin offering and killed it. He offered it for a sin off for a sin offering. He did just he did just as he had done with his own sin offering. He brought the animal for the burnt offering. He offered it in the in the way the law requires. He also brought the grain offering. He took a handful of it and burned on the altar. It was in the ditch addition to that morning's burnt offering. Aaron killed the ox and the ram as the friendship offering for the people. His sons handed him the blood. He splashed it against the sides of the altar. His sons also brought the fat parts of the ox and the ram. They included the fat tail and the layer of fat. And they also included the kidneys and the long part of the liver. Aaron's sons placed everything on the breast of the animals. Aaron burned the fat on the altar. He lifted up the breast and the right thigh and waved them in front of the Lord as a wave offering. He did it just as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people. He gave them a blessing. He had already sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the friendship offering. So he stepped down from the altar. Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they gave the people a blessing. The glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. The Lord sent fire on the altar. Fire burned up the burnt offering along with the fat parts. All the people saw it. Then they shouted for joy. They fell with their faces to the ground. Nadab and Abihu were two of Aaron's sons. They got their shallow cups of the burning incense. They put fire on them. They added incense to it. They made an offering to the Lord by using fire that wasn't allowed. They did it against his command. So the Lord sent fire on them. It burned them up. They died in front of the Lord. Then Moses spoke to Aaron. He said, That's what the Lord was talking about when he said, Among those who approach me, I will show that I am holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. So Aaron remained silent. Moses sent for Mishael and Elzaphan. They were the son they were sons of Aaron's uncle, Uziel. Moses said to them, Come here, carry the bodies of your cousins outside the camp. Take them away from in front of the holy room. So they came and carried them outside the camp. It was just as Moses had ordered. The bodies of Nadab and Abu, who still had their inner robes on them. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Elzai and Ithamar. They were Aaron's sons. Moses said, Don't let your hair hang loose. Don't take your clothes. If you do, you will die, and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. But all the Israelites are allowed to show they are sad. They are your relatives. They may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed with fire. Don't leave the entrance to the tent of meeting. If you do, you will die. That's because the Lord's anointing oil has made you whole. So they did what Moses told them to do.
Then the Lord spoke to Aaron. He said, You and your sons will go into the tent of meeting. When you do, you must not drink any kind of wine. If you do, you will die. This is a law that will last for all time to come. This is so that you can tell the difference between what is holy and what is not. You must be able to tell the difference between what is clean and what is not. Then you will be able to teach the Israelites all the rules I have given them through Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, and there were Aaron's two remaining sons. Moses said, Take the grain offering left over from the food offering presented to the Lord. It is very holy. Make bread without yeast from it. Eat it beside the elder. Eat it in the holy area. It's your share and your son's share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. These rules are in keeping with the command the Lord gave me. But you and your sons and your daughters can eat the breast that was waved. You can also eat the thigh that was waved. No, it's offered. Eat them in a clean place. They have been given to you and your children. And they are your share of the friendship offerings, their children. No, it's light break. The thigh that was offered must be brought together with the fat parts of the food offerings. The breast that was waved must be brought, uh, brought in the same way. All of it must be lifted up and waved in front of the Lord as a wave offering. It will be the share for you and your children for all time to come. And that's what the Lord has commanded. Moses asked about a goat that was brought as a sin offering. He found, he found out that it had been burned up. So he became angry with Elzar and Ithamar. They were Aaron's two remaining sons. Moses asked them, Why didn't you eat the sin offering in a place near the holy room? The offering is very holy. It was given to you to take to people's guilt away. It, it paid for their sin in the sign of the Lord. The blood of the offering wasn't taken into the holy room. So you should have eaten the goat in a place near the holy room. That's what I commanded. Aaron replied to Moses, Today the people sacrificed this an offering to the Lord, but they also sacrificed their burnt offerings to him. But a terrible thing has happened to me. Who and my soul and have died? Would the Lord have been pleased if I had eaten the sin offering today? When Moses heard that, he was satisfied. Proverbs 3 My son, do not forget my teaching. Keep my commands in your heart. They will help you live for many years. They will bring you peace and success. Don't let the love and truth ever leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you'll find favor and a good name in the eyes of God and people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways obey him. Then he will make you pass me in the street. Then be wise in your own eyes. Have respect for the Lord and avoid evil. That will bring health to your body. It will make you both strong. Honor the Lord with your wife. Give him the first share of all your God. Then your storerooms will be so full they can't hold everything. Your huge jars will spill over with fresh wine. My son, do not the Lord's train. Do not object when he corrects you. The Lord trains those he loves. He is like a father who trains the son he is pleased with. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. Blessed is the one who gains understanding. Wisdom pays better than silver does. She earns more than gold does. She is worth more than rubies. Nothing you want can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In the left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. All her paths lead to peace. She is a tree of life for those who take hold of her. Those who hold her close will be blessed. I wisdom to the Lord laid the earth's foundations. Through understanding he set the heavens in place. I acknowledge the seas are separate, and the clouds drop their dew. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Hold on to good sense and the understanding of what is right. There will be life for you. There will be like a gracious necklace around your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety. You will not trip fall. When you lie down, you won't be afraid. When you lie down, you will sleep soundly. Don't be terrified by sun trouble. Don't be afraid when sins are destroyed. The Lord will be your just son. He will keep your feet from being caught in a trap. Don't hold back good from the who are worth you. Don't hold it back when you can help. Suppose you already have something to give. Don't say it to your name. Come back tomorrow. I'll give it to you then. Don't plan to harm your name. He lives near you and trusts you. Don't bring charges against anyone for no reason. They have not harmed you. Don't be jealous of a person who hurts others. Don't choose any of their ways. The Lord really hates sinful people. But he makes honest people his closest friend. The Lord puts a curse on the houses of sins. But he blesses the homes of those who do what is right. He makes them fun of crowd people who make fun of others. But he gives grace to those who are humble and true about. The wise people receive honor, but foolish people get only shame. Psalm 36. I have a message from God in my heart. It is about the evil ways of anyone who sins. They don't have any respect for God. They praise themselves so much. They can that they can't see their sin or hate. The mouths, their mouths speak words that are evil and false. They do not act wisely or do what is good. Even as they lie in bed, they make evil plans. They commit themselves to a sinful way of life. They never say no to what is wrong. Lord, your love is as high as the heavens. Your faithful love reaches up to the skies. Your holiness is as great as the height of the highest mountain. You are as honest as the oceans are deep. Lord, you keep people and I will save. How priceless your faithful love is. You will find safety in the shadow of your wings. They eat well because there is more than enough in your house. You have let them drink from your river that 
supplies you with good things. You are not the fan of life. We are filled with life because you give us life. Keep on loving those who love you. Keep on doing right to those who are honest. <clears throat> Don't let the feet of those who are proud step on me. Don't let the hands of those who are evil drive me away. See the, how those who do evil are for. They throw down and can't get up. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please pray your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as you first have forgiven our debtors. There is not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.